Hello, Kia ora Te Fano. So Mark here with a short video, part of the uh, Retroactive Jealousy series. If you're watching this on Patreon, you might be watching this, um, or you won't be watching this anyway, because this is a Patreon only one, so you're privileged if you're watching this. This is just for patrons. So a very quick one. Medication, does it have a role in the treatment of retroactive jealousy? I think it can, yes. Uh, it's interesting if you were if you come from the UK, the uh, state health services, the National Health Service, the NHS, which sadly has been dismantled, is uh, is the practices uh, is governed or is directed by an organisation called NICE, N I C E, National Institute of Clinical Excellence. Some people call it the National Institute of Cost Effectiveness, but I wouldn't be cynical. And uh, for certain treatments, they have clinical guidelines. So it's what doctors would refer to and various clinicians. And in the clinical guidelines, and, and these are available online, you can look these up for OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, there are a couple of medication options made available. Uh, and the first point of call is an SSRI. Or is it an SSSRI? And this is where I get muddled up with uh, Site of Special Scientific Interest, which is three S's, and Serotonin Specific Reuptake Inhibitor. So that's two S's, isn't it? So a Serotonin Specific Reuptake Inhibitor is the modern kind of antidepressant, uh, which is also effective for anxiety. Now, uh, the way they work, people have, there's a lot of myths, so this is, this is a, a demystifying video, really. Uh, there are a lot of myths about antidepressants and SSRIs. The modern SSRIs are, uh, they're quite interesting in the way they work. So they don't really, the way I look at it is they don't do anything abnormal to your brain. What they do is restore your brain function to how it should be, really. So serotonin specific reuptake inhibitor. So what happens is in your brain, there are nerve cells, neurons, which connect and the lubricant that connects them and makes one nerve cell fire up to another. There are a number of chemicals that do this, one of which is serotonin. Now if your serotonin is low, as it is in the case of people who are depressed, and often people who have other secondary conditions and things like retroactive jealousy, obsessive compulsive disorder, then what's happening is uh, there's not much serotonin, there's not much flux, or there's not much, um, there's not much um, of the stuff that connects these things, the lubricant that connects the neurons. So the brain cells fire quite slowly and sluggishly because there's not enough of this chemical. And it's a feel-good chemical. If you've got lots of it, then you, you feel quite good if it's floating around inside your head. Now, what happens is there's a mechanism in the brain which um, which secretes serotonin and then gobbles it all up again, uh, hence reuptake. Okay. So a serotonin-specific reuptake inhibitor, a form of antidepressant, stops if you've if you've not got much serotonin going going around in your brain and your brain's not functioning as in quite as happy a way as it should be then uh, the last thing you want is your brain to to start gobbling it all up and taking it all away again so what it does is it stops that process the way i like to look at it is um you know you're a, a four-year-old child you're having a, a lovely time and you've got all your toys out all over the floor and every time you get into a game somebody comes along and starts putting all the toys back in the box Oh, that's no fun, is it? That's what's kind of happening in your brain. So the serotonin is the toys. So what happens is the medication stops some nasty, mean adult putting all the toys back in the box and spoiling your fun so you, you feel good. So the, the enjoyment and the pleasure and the good sensation lasts for longer. So it lifts the mood. And what they found is that obsessive compulsive disorder can be helped by using one of these medications. So it's something you might want to consider. I certainly you know, wouldn't rule it out, particularly if you've got other symptoms, if you're a little bit down or a little bit flat, lacking in motivation, if you wake up very early in the morning and you can't get back to sleep, if you have sleep difficulties. The top tip for using these kind of medications is, uh, first of all, uh, get a good GP. GPs like garages, um, if you can find a good one, for God's sake, hold on to it.
So if you can find a GP that's helpful that you can talk to, um, then fantastic. If your GP is not good, if you haven't got a good relationship with your GP, then I would always say try and find a better one. And maybe ask um, other people for recommendations. Get a good GP if you've got any kind of health problem going on. It's very, very important. And that's a good GP in terms of their clinical abilities and in terms of how, how they respond to you as a, a human being. Because you need a balance of both. If you're not feeling great, then the last thing you want is an unsympathetic GP. It can be wise to um, take a bit of time to um, what they call titrate, so make sure that you get the right dose and the right one. Some of these can actually make you feel worse, and some make you feel worse for a very short while, a couple of weeks normally, uh, before they kick in and you get the benefit. So have a good GP and Give it a fair trial. If you're going to try one at a certain dose, give it a fair trial. Don't you know? do what some people do, is they take it for two days and then they give up on it. That's a waste of time. You have to be willing to put in a little bit of work to make antidepressants work for you. So try them for at least two weeks. Go back to your doctor, discuss it with your doctor. Is it working, is it not working? How are the side effects? And be prepared to try something different or to alter the dose. <coughs> and they're not very good for coughs, unfortunately. So I'm not saying you definitely need to be on antidepressants. But at the same time, I, you know, I'm saying there's no shame in being on antidepressants and uh, anti-anxiety, or sorry, anti-anxiety drugs. Um, give it a try, there are side effects, look them up, use, you know, use the internet, use your, your GP, make an informed decision, but you know, do consider it because it may give you the edge. If you're feeling low and you haven't got enough serotonin kicking around inside your head, then your recovery from retroactive jealousy isn't gonna be as effective. Likewise, if you're suffering from other underlying conditions, and we'll talk some more about that, we'll talk some more about things like ADHD, autism, that kind of stuff. So consider that. There are other medical options uh, for, um, or medicinal options for treating OCD. That's not something that I would get into. That's a, a medical thing, and that's something I would suggest discussing with a, a specialist. But do consider talking to your GP about antidepressants if you think that that might be a useful path for you to go down. And nothing ventured, nothing gained. If it, if it gives you that edge, then fantastic. Because fighting RJ is a battle I think you have to fight on every single front. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of full-time job, really, recovering from retroactive jealousy. And you, you have to treat it like a war, you know, with many battlefronts. And with that same sense of urgency, that same sense of importance. So fight on, my friends. Be brave. And... If this appeals to you and you want to try it out, then go for it. If it doesn't, then absolutely fine. Trust yourself, trust your judgment. Uh, I hope this is helpful. And I will catch you soon in another video. Take care.